it's kind of working. It says starting. Starting. Oh, and there it is. Cool. It looks like it's working. Let's see if I if there is sound. Test one, two. Can I hear myself on my live stream? Testing. Waiting for the lag. There's supposed to be sound. OBS has sound. Maybe if I increase the mic gain. Check one, two. Uh, let's see. Make sure our audio output. Excuse the, uh, the terrible video holding. This will not be the entire stream. I will be putting this down on a uh, tripod once I get started. Assuming I get sound. Um, here we go. So there is sound there. Just because I can't hear myself might not mean that uh, you guys can't. So we're going to try to sound. That could be why. Test. Uh, monitor. One, two. Ah, that's why. There was sound this whole time. I can't hear myself. Might not mean that. Uh, great. So there was there was sound the whole the whole time. It was just uh, it was just muted for me. These monitors activate when they get a signal, and so they uh, they were off. Great. Let's uh, stop making everyone seasick and put this on something more solid. We got a uh, tripod over here. Here is the absolute mess of a build currently. Um, so this would have been set up in advance. However, I uh, I ended up realizing that I couldn't stream from the phone to a scheduled stream that I'd already set up. So I had to very quickly pair OBS, uh, plug in the webcam, and get that all set up, and then pair, yeah, pair the encoder, all of that good things. It got done relatively in time. We get audio out of a nice condenser mic now, so hopefully that's going to sound decent and at a reasonable level. Very cool. And uh, if this doesn't impair video quality too much, I will also add a wide angle lens so we can see a little more field of view. Wonderful. That, uh, that looks fine. That looks totally fine. Great. All right, so um, what should, what now? So we've got all of this here, so I guess I should get in front of the camera. We'll look over what we've done so far, and then where to catch up. That's obnoxious, that little thing there. This is a very much a work in progress. Let's just rotate uh, the whole rig. Very good. And uh, bring it up. Cool. And I'm looking at myself on my uh, on my screen just to make sure things are level and flat. So, uh, been working on the Hackintosh. I was up super late last night trying to finish it. Um, well, not finish. I knew I wouldn't get it done in time. But we do at least have all the components in the case. It boots up uh, into BIOS. I haven't tried installing anything yet. Um, I ended up realizing a couple things, and one was that uh, the Vega gets really, really hot really, really fast, and there's not a ton of airflow to it. So what I'd like to try to do is uh, install a top fan, like blowing air down on the Vega 64, and um, so it can exhaust that way. I also have a couple other uh, Corsair fans. Um, there's another case, you might have seen it back there, 
uh, with the extremely dusty filters. That was a NAS server that uh, I'm sort of taking apart and salvaging what I can and putting it into the new one. Um, so yeah, it had quite a few 140 mil Corsair fans in it. I think a few of those might be useful. Um, so I'm going to use some of those, some static pressure. I've got a couple static pressure fans, an airflow fan. I looked up a lot of the specs on the Be Quiet Silent Wings 3 fans, which come with, um, with the case. And they're pretty decent at both static pressure and airflow. So that's not going to be too much of an issue, I don't think. So let's take a look inside the case. Uh, and so we have... Um, we're going to have the hard drives obviously in the bay. I also think this might be upside down because there's a significant gap between the motherboard and the hard drive base. And I think that gap is supposed to be between the fans and the hard drives. So I probably mounted this upside down when I inverted the motherboard last night um, in the other stream, which is actually only on Facebook. So I, I inverted the motherboard. I'm doing an inverse ATX build. So I might be, I might also need to flip the hard drive base. And then uh, in addition, I watched a Gamers Nexus video uh, where they were talking about this case and said that the power supply actually doesn't have an intake under there. I didn't even look. And so I may need to invert the power supply as well and then have the power supply fan pull air out this way through the uh, the Noctua. So that's the plan. Uh, probably invert the power supply. It looks upside down. It's not. The fan is pointing down right now. Um, potentially into very little ventilation. Hopefully into something, but it doesn't matter. So I'm going to invert the power supply. I think it needs to come out. Um, I think the hard drive bay needs flipped. And I think that's probably it. I'm gonna mount a um, get a mount a static pressure fan right there uh, to put pressure on the on the blower for the Vega 56, which will then take that cool air out this way. And then uh, I'm gonna leave the Silent Wings three in the rear. In the front, um, I'm gonna do probably the two Silent Wings fans in the middle. And then uh, static pressure Corsair fan up here. This is an airflow one. And I'll mount all the hard drives, um, or isn't like probably four max up here, and then maybe another two down there. So we should have a clear airflow uh, from the front to the Noctua CPU heatsink. Uh, static pressure putting pressure on the drives, static pressure providing fresh air to the card so it doesn't matter that the drives are there. And then um, the other silent wings underneath for the two drives down there, obviously they're all helping with intake. I have been kind of torn as to whether I should use a static pressure intake in the middle for the CPU. And based on the reviews and how no, I think based on the reviews and how much the case improves temperatures as soon as the front panels open, it would probably help to have a, front, a static pressure fan pulling air to the CPUs. Mm, it's hard to say. The silent wings have pretty decent static pressure too. I guess the right question would be which fan has higher static pressure. Is it the Corsair? Or is it the Silent Wings 3? So let's, uh, let's do that right now. I will grab the phone, because now I have my phone free now that we're doing this, uh, this webcam stream. Now let's um, open up a browser. Oh, I've got a, got a bunch of fan searches open already, so most janky browser sharing. Let's try this out. Um, I think I had this open, actually, but I must have fallen asleep while I was reading it. So we've got a uh, Corsair Static Pressure SP140. It's the same thing, just not the LED version. Provides uh, 1.17 millimeter, or 
is it is it millimeters i think millimeters is the proper measurement for static pressure millimeters h2o all right and then let's look up the be quiet uh silent wings three wings three static pressure I think I'll put the one with the higher static pressure to giving the clear airflow, perhaps. Uh, tech specs. I, am I OBS? I could actually look this up on my computer and we could do the, the research together. Let's do that. That's going to look a little, uh, a little more professional. So I am going to first minimize my YouTube dashboard and then go to OBS and say add a new source, add a screen capture, uh, display capture, sure, that's it, okay, hey, there it is, it's my screen. And um, yeah, display zero, no crop. Awesome, and we will just say transform and uh, fit to screen. Wonderful, and we'll throw the Logitech webcam on top so that we can still see the case, and we'll throw that in the corner without uh, massively resizing it. Not like I'm doing anything down there right now. Anyway, so let's go all of this. Sonarworks demo. And so what we're trying to figure out is do we want a, uh, hey, there's my YouTube URL, that's fine. At least it's not the live stream key. Let's look up uh, Be Quiet Silent Wings 3. Uh, and there, there it is. We can find the specs on it. I realize this is in 4K, so I should probably super zoom this so it's um it's visible and it looks like we have a uh, 1.08 okay the meter h2o at 12 volts 15.5 db and we want corsair sp140 um doesn't the leds do not change the air pressure contrary to the current belief of a uh, RGB massively increasing performance. I don't know why I still have this open. I'm getting better at this slowly. I apologize. All right, that's better. Okay, so it's really loud. Um, it has a higher static pressure, pretty low airflow though. Only 49 CFM, because this one is almost 60. So yeah, it would make more sense to keep this uh, probably pulling air from the front uh, to the knock to a cooler. And then I'll keep one in the rear pulling air out the back. And let's look up the airflow of the Corsair AF140. Uh, Corsair. All right, tech specs, 67.8, that's great, but almost no static pressure uh, whatsoever to speak of. So that being the case, why don't, ha, case, all right. So let's do, is it, okay, 24 dB, that's fine. All right, I think I have a plan. Let's go back to OBS, let's go back to the webcam I will uh, make this small and fit my webcam back to window. Transform, fit to screen, great. Okay, so given those, uh, given those tech specs, yes, there is my face. This is really a bad webcam. I gotta get a better camera. There's the uh, festive narwhal uh, behind me as well. So. 
given those tech specs, I think we'll do the Corsair AF140 in the rear because it has no, it doesn't need to fight static pressure at all, and we'll have higher airflow being pulled out of the Noctua um, as exhaust. And we're gonna need all the exhaust we can get because there's, there's gonna be like four intake fans. Um, so yeah, I'll do that. And then we'll do a static pressure fan on the top intake, Corsair static pressure intaking to the Radeon, the Vega. And then the three, all three silent wings, three in the front for both airflow and static pressure intake. That sounds like that sounds like a much better plan. I'll even have an extra static pressure fan left over, although I don't know what I'd really do with it. I'd, I'd like to have a second exhaust, but there's not really any room for that on this case. So yeah, I'll just um, I'll just leave that. All right, let's uh, let's go back to the case and do all of this fan business. So I'll unplug it, unplug the uh, display port. I was testing last night to make sure it booted. Um, first step, I guess I'll take the hardware out. This graphics card is so large and loud. Great. All right, there's the uh, Vega 64 with fingerprints on it already. Throw that on the desk. And uh, we'll remove the motherboard too, so we'll need to disconnect 24 pin power. And I should reopen the dashboard in case there are any comments or hit questions. I'll be actually be able to see them. So one moment. Okay, 24 pin connectors out. Let's go back to the YouTube dashboard just so I'm not blind to whatever might be happening. YouTube Studio Beta. Interesting. Okay. Uh, videos. Live. And here I am. Oh, I can't see the chat in the new beta, apparently. Because I opened it. This is awkward. Where do I find the current chats? I guess I just watch myself. Wow, that webcam looks absolutely terrible. I'm gonna have to switch to the phone at some point. I apologize for the, the extreme lack of quality on that webcam, but if things will improve massively once this is done because uh, yeah, I'll have I'll have better hardware for this. I'll be able to sort it all out. The iPhone was just inconsistent, to say the least, over the Wi-Fi. And this is the next best option. All right, um, motherboard out. We've got to remove our six, our eight pin plus four pin CPU power, which also feels like massive overkill, but. Maybe not. I know this is a an extremely power hungry CPU. This is literally Oh, hi Charlie. How's it going? <laughs> Good to see you on uh, on the internet, on the interwebs. This is a potato camera. I am ashamed of the quality. All right, moving on, I guess I have to start somewhere. So fan's done, that's done. Okay, let's take out the motherboard and get ready to do some PSU and fan rearrangement. So there we go, there's the board with the Noctua cooler and the uh, 32 gigs of, of RAM. I do not have the motherboard box to sit this on. I must have moved it. I'll grab the anti-static bag. That will be the next best thing. Great. 
I should also not be wearing socks, probably. I don't know. I'll just keep discharging myself. This should be attached to ground in a sec. So power supply. Let's remove the power supply and uh, make the inner workings slightly more visible. There we go. Remove the power supply. All of these modular cables. Uh, did I screw this back in on the other side? I must have. I did. All right, so I'm going to unscrew the PSU to see if it has airflow. And uh, it does, great, but if not, then we'll have to flip it. I believe you can build an ITX system in this case too, so I heard, but I'm not 100% sure about that. can't get over the potato camera. I'm watching myself on YouTube doing this. Okay. PSU. There it is. And oh, it has, it has airflow. I don't know what, oh, maybe not. There's this, there's a tiny channel under here where it looks like it could intake uh, it has the potential to intake air, but it's a lot wider. No, yeah, that's fine. I am wondering though, because it's so close to the, the Noctua and because I have so much positive pressure from intake fans, I could use the extra exhaust. Um, so I might invert the power supply, uh, and just let it pull, pull air through the top. I think, I think I will end up doing that. Mm, yeah. All right. So let's, let's unmount this. Oh, it can stay in its cage. No, it can't stay in its cage. Never mind. So we will have to remove the cage. Is it just me or do I keep getting pinker and pinker with this, uh, with this webcam? That is awful. What is going on? White balance, please. There we go. It must be something about that. It thinks that's white and so it's trying to adjust. Um, so let's remove these screws. There's four screws in the bottom that the power supply cage attaches to. We're going to move them over in order to make room for the uh, for the motherboard. I, I believe it was over to this side before the case was inverted, and then once I inverted the case. Um, it was in the wrong spot and I forgot that it would need moved, need to be moved, grammar. This is a very difficult screw to reach. So that's why this should have been done with the motherboard tray not installed. I know you can't see the screws, but it would it'd be very difficult to change that right now. I watched another video though with um it was back when it was Luke Tech Tips and Linus Tech Tips and they did a test and the only thing inverting the power supply really did was 
increase the PSU temperature, but that was not in a reverse ATX or inverse ATX setup like this where the CPU is at the bottom and the graphics card is at the top. So the hope is that it'll help exhaust through the radiator. I mean, worst case scenario, I don't think the power supply is going to be getting all that hot anyway. I'm not sure if these screws are supposed to be tightened fully or not um, in order for the PSU to latch. Cool. That was boring. So now we get to swap the power supply. Hopefully that'll be a little easier to get into the camera. The worst white balance in the world. There's really no way to, there's really no way to adjust that. There's, there's some airfoil under there though, so I, I wouldn't be too worried about having it the opposite direction. I do think it might, um, might perform slightly better though if I can pull more of the air out that's coming in with all these intakes. It's a little weird when everything's reversed from normal. off. Oh, one more screw. Cool. I'm going to flip that over and uh, remount the power supply. This time using it as an exhaust fan. My, uh, my MacBook may even be audible on this mic, hissing away, struggling to encode the live stream. Very noisy. This is going to be a very nice change. Cool. So now the power supply has the fan facing upwards and it's going to be on the correct side of the case. So we can put this wire in. It's already set to on as it should be in this case. In this case. There's so many case puns today. I don't know what's up. Let's lock this in. Oh. Oh, not quite. Is that correct? That doesn't look correct. Oh no, it's latched. That is correct. Interesting. So, uh, the thing I'm noticing with this is that the there's this lip here. And I think there's, I know that there's different levels of like where, of uh, mounting option, like how far in to the case you'd like the PSU to be. I put it on the farthest one this time, and I don't think that's going to affect me, but at the same time, I'm kind of concerned about this sucking the hot air back up out of the PSU. So while we're at it, let's just move those four uh, floor screws back one notch. Or two even. Will it fit two notches back? Potentially not. If it's all the way back, that position looks like it would place it um, somewhere like there. Oh, I guess right here. That's where it would hook in. I mean, as long as there's room for the that a uh, weird bracket 
this weird uh, extension cord thing they have to fit, I, I'd probably just rather put it as far in as possible to make more room inside. I'll try it. It may not work. It'll be worth a shot. Right. There's uh there's one side. Oh, it's probably too far down. There's a hook. There we go. And then uh, the other side. The more space I could make, probably the better. Here. Also, know it's generally more effective to uh, pull hot air out than to push cool air on. So having an extra, an extra exhaust, PSU exhaust, probably isn't the worst idea in the world. Cool. So I believe that's uh, I believe that's it. Let's check this out. And it's not going to work at all unless I remove this uh, power panel, which I'd very much like to do because I really don't like it. I just worry I'm going to have a big like gap. And actually, I will have a, a large gap in the back of the case if I don't use it. Because in the rear here, I guess you can see from this side, there's there's this grill and great kind of deal going on. And that does seem to, the PSU doesn't take up this entire space. So yeah, my only option is going to be to move it forwards, I think. And if I want to keep a solid back to the case. It's kind of unfortunate. I don't know how else they would have developed this like modular design though. I guess this is the most rear one already so I just need to move this one screw. It's the, the playing around phase. <laughs> Just picking up screws from anywhere. Not the correct thing to do. This one. Move this one up to uh, this slot here. Cool. Let's try this. And it won't lock. Is this somehow different from the others? Because this one keeps dropping straight in, whereas the others don't. It's almost like they have a spacer on them. They do have a spacer on them. So that has a spacer, this one doesn't. Did I lose my spacer screw, or rather put it in the wrong spot? It's highly likely we can investigating these. That's got a spacer, that's got a spacer. This one does, so this one's good. Just one more screw that is uh, spaced in order to latch the PSU on. The worry is that I screwed it back into the wrong place elsewhere, which is probably what happened. It wouldn't be one of these, those were very clearly different. Just like recounting everything I have, uh, I have moved. Wouldn't be one of those. It would probably, probably would have put it back 
on the bottom of the case where the hard drive thing uh, reconnected or the top, there's some screws there too. Those all look correct though. So where is our, our standoff screw? Screw hunting. The, one of the most fun parts of computer building. I do have an iFixit tray. I should probably start using that. That might be a good idea. Well, these do not have stands off. These um, are all the same type of screw. Got some Corsair fan screws. Corsair fans, the EATX standoffs over here. Corsair fan, Corsair fan, grommet, tiny things. Not sure what those are for. EATX standoff. Oh, that is. I am somewhat stuck. I guess I can replace this back, this rear fan. Um, so yeah, it's getting intake. I do, I think the, the Corsair high airflow fan is pushing more air, will be a better choice for the rear here. Can I remove this? These silent wings fans are really nice though. I'd love to just use all, all silent wings three fans, but that would be extremely pricey. And I have the Corsair ones laying around, so why not? As long as I don't make the airflow worse by adding more fans. Which I'm sure it's possible to do. Okay, there's these little, uh, I don't know if that'll focus. There's silencers on all the screws, which is quite nice. This case was designed for the most silence. Awesome. Uh, now the Corsair Airflow fan is this one in front near the camera. So I'm gonna take that out and mount that in the rear. I suppose I can use these uh, these grommets that came with the Corsair fan. So I don't even know if these came with the Corsair fan. I think these came with my Corsair case, but they fit here, which is nice. If I couldn't silence these fans with something, I probably just wouldn't do it because silence is one of the goals of this build. Tired of having a MacBook noise. All right, one, two. I'm gonna take this out first. Three. And four. Come on. It was a really tight squeeze. I was determined to get that to fit outside. No, I don't want to have to use tools. Tools should not be necessary. Uh, there we go. But if these things are still in one piece, I have no doubt they're a little chopped up, but I think they're still gonna work and they should fit more comfortably here or not oh, this, uh, this may not work with these screws nope it's not going to fit all right we'll use these never mind 
this is all that's going to fit here. And we'll mount the, let's see, this is the airflow fan. It's sort of unmarked. It came stock in a, um, one of the Corsair, like high airflow cases I used to have. I didn't like it because the whole thing was like really plasticky and noisy. Uh, not because of the fans as much as just the poor case construction. fun as it would be to just throw it all together and boot it up. I'd rather not have to come back in to improve airflow. I'll just take the time now and sort all that out. Cool. I'm wondering if I should put the little rubber shocks between the fan and the case or leave them between the screw and the case. So here it made sense because these are the Silent Wings fans have their own rubberized inserts. This does not. So this is making direct contact with the case. I think it would be more beneficial to isolate the moving part rather than the non-moving part. I'm going to be doing this. Actually, experimenting. The airflow is going to be very good though once this is done. I'm pretty sure it'll be better than just the stock configuration, which already isn't bad by any means. So we'll mount this here. We'll mount not there. That is a 120 millimeter spot. Put that on the 140 mil spot where it belongs. And another 140 mil. At least the stream with the potato camera is uh, going to be one of the most uninteresting because it's just screwing things in. Another. Let's head and put sticky side towards the case. And um, last one. Oh no, not the last one. This one already had one. That's what happened on the uh, opposite side. Just, you know, trying to attach some fans. Another day in the life of a music producer who builds their own computers. Snacks are too expensive. Fit. Now we'll attach the fan. And yeah, that's right. We'll do cable going that way. We'll go down. I'm starting to plan the, the cable management now as well. It's a good time, especially because we have to decide on uh, fan directions. That's going to be better. There's a nice uh, rubberized isolation layer between the fan and the case. So that sh that'll, that'll do a lot more airflow out the rear. So now we'll mount the three Silent Wings fans on top, or in the front, rather. Yeah. 
crushing anything or losing losing as few screws as possible. I don't know why all this is here. These don't need to be in here. Nor does the uh, IO shield. That's going to make life a little bit cleaner. Nice. Front fan mounting time. So we'll use all the Silent Wings 3 fans. Uh, they don't, I do not believe they need any grommets. They didn't have any. I think they just mount with their own. Except those, the rear one had those rubber things, but these didn't seem to have anything. So, uh, hand screws. Well, that wasn't it. I put them all together. There we go. That's a fan screw. So one of them will have to use the Corsair grommets because um, that's all I have for that. We'll route this one this way. Try and run all the cables through the back of the case. Before I put these in, let's try and flip this uh, this hard drive cage to give more room to the front fans. That would be a good idea. Because it does look a uh, mirrorable. I do like how modular this case is, but because this case is so modular, that's why it's day two and I haven't even mounted the motherboard yet. Because there's too many options. Like what's the best way? I have no idea. There are all there are a lot of okay ways to do it, but um, it was very specific build. So with the inverted ATX and now inverted power supply, while trying to be silent, all air, no radiators. It's a little bizarre. Great. So let's uh, remove this now. This is the uh, hard drive cage attachment. This has to be invertible. That is this. Great. Cool. And there's three on the top. Oh, here it is. This will make life easier. Yeah, technology. Awesome. Oh, there's some in the front. This could be where my where I lost my standoff screw. Could be one of these. I didn't look here. It's hard to uh, be continually mindful of where the camera is pointing. My gimbal does the whole auto tracking thing, but it's iffy at best. And when it loses its target, um, it just starts flying around and it ends up being more trouble than it's worth. None of these are my missing screw. I'll go look for it in a, I'm gonna take a break next and uh, upgrade the camera. 
All right, uh, so here's the panel. Now let's invert this. Glad those fans are not in the way when I'm doing this. Actually, they wouldn't be anyway. They'd be in the front, but that's okay. Um, yes. This way. Very nice. Much better. Now the front fans can actually breathe. I have a little less GPU clearance, but I checked and the, uh, the graphics card does not come out that far, so it's really only a, a benefit. Cool. Now I'll realign or remount this. That's where that goes. You can do it, screw I just can't wait to have the case assembled. Even just having the fans in will feel like a big accomplishment. Usually it's just take the case out of the box and throw the parts in. But when you can invert everything like 20 different ways, you start being like, well, what's the best airflow? How many intakes versus exhaust should I have? Is the graphics card better upside down? I don't know. I've never been able to do that before. And then before you know it, two days have gone by and you still don't have the motherboard mounted. A day. It's all right. Great. I'll just back this up slightly so I don't need to keep moving it. Or keep moving it as much. So the, uh, the hard drive cage, cage attacher is reinstalled uh, almost. So there's three screws at the top and there's three at the bottom which I will reattach now. screw. I found it. it. It must have been one of these. We can now remount the power supply. Everything's coming together. I'll reattach that power supply standoff. Uh, which one of these is this? It's this one. I'm not sure if it changed when I inverted it. both or either. There was only ever one installed there though. On the top there are two uh, fully aligned slots for these screws but there's only ever been one attached so I would be concerned that if I uh, if I were to use extra that I'll be missing screws. Count how many extra ones I have here of this type. Eh, there's a whole, it came with a bag of extra ones. Okay, that doesn't attach. So it goes through, but it doesn't thread. So it is correct to only have three. It doesn't thread to the extent that I can't remove it. All 
right, so we've inverted the hard drive tray. There's more room for airflow in the front now. Um, oh, got to reattach the motherboard tray. That would be a good thing. Do not want the motherboard flying around inside the case. Even rubber grommets on the attachment between the hard drive tray and the motherboard tray. It's a, a lot of attention to detail. I really like that. I'm glad I picked this case. Cool. Now the hard drive tray is done. There's more room in the front. Uh, yeah, the motherboard tray is reattached. What else is there really? Um, we've got an airflow fan, so I guess we'll get the front fans mounted. And uh, I was, actually this is, this is almost just as good of a view either way. Good or bad of a view. So, I'm trying to decide now whether we put these fans on the inside or the outside of the cage. So either the fan chokes on the hard drives or it chokes on the intake. Neither is great. Um, how much clearance do we have here? I mean, there is some minimal amount of, of clearance for these fans, but it is very, it's very minimal. Here's the front, this is what I'm looking at. So if the fan is mounted on the outside of the cage, it's going to be like in there. And it's going to have to pull air up and through the side, which means it's immediately going to be sucked up by the edges of the blades and you get a lot less surface area of air transfer. So that's not good. And But with that being said, um, it may be the best alternative because the other option is to put it on the inside and have more room for intake, but have require extremely high static pressure because of the proximity to the hard drive cages. So I'll mount, I'll mount a little demo cage in here so where the camera can see like that. And, uh, this fan would be right here, blowing directly. And you know what? I think there's enough space there. I'll move my hand out of the way. There's not a lot of space, but there's going to be gaps between the drive cages and um, there's gaps both horizontally and vertically. Let me mount another drive cage to see how close they sit to each other. Yeah, you know, I think uh, now that I have repositioned the tray and I can mount the fans on the inside, uh, this might be a better solution because we'll at least be able to have a clearer intake. And then... Uh, there's holes kind of in these cages too. It's really hard to say. Neither option is great. I think I'm going to go for a more full intake though and higher static pressure internally than choking the intakes. So we'll mount all the fans on the inside. Because if it's choking on air, there's not going to be anything for it to get caught on the hard drive. Um, so. Yeah, let's do that. So we're going to flip the fans, mount them on the inside of the case, and give them more breathing room. Oh, this is the first one. We'll install on um, 
in the cell in the middle as an intake with the cable going down and this way. Yes, great. Perfect. Actually, I could even start down here. So I have one here, hard drive, hard drive, some breathing room, another one here, airflow, no drives at all, and then um, either coarse air static pressure or another one of these at the top. Probably another one of these just because it'll look cooler and the static pressure difference is not a ton. Uh, and then we could potentially, I'm not sure if I want to add another exhaust. I probably don't want to do a second rear exhaust. Um, with the, the issue with that being, yeah, if, if I were to mount a, not rear exhaust, sorry, bottom exhaust, if I were to mount a bottom exhaust static pressure here, it would, it would definitely be able to overcome the force downwards and you know, exhaust hot air down the bottom. I would just be concerned that it would be grabbing the air, the fresh air coming in from the front before it even gets to the Noctua cooler, which is going to be right there. It, it will probably overpower the Noctua and I'll lose cool air to the CPU. So I'm just going to leave that that way. Whereas the power supply exhaust, that's going to have to pass through the Noctua to escape and that should help or escape out that way and that should help with uh, CPU temps in theory completely in theory no idea how, how, how this is actually going to be but just going off best guesses because I I'm not going to like rebuild the whole system and just keep testing for like a couple degrees Celsius I'll just try to get the best that I can um, with good practice of airflow. I can mount the, remount the PSU. Great, and now we have a uh, exhaust, exhaust, and a uh, CPU intake is sticks out quite a bit because it's such a massive cooler. These two small ones will mount the PSU. I also have more space by the motherboard now, which is very nice. Yeah, I do believe I, I remember this case being able to build a, a mini ITX system down there, although that would have to be a really small CPU cooler, maybe like AIO. All right, it's a moderately solid. Cool. Uh, front fans, we'll just do the trio of Be Quiet fans. I can't think of a better place to do it. It would be awesome to have a second exhaust back there, uh, but that's not possible. So it's all, all Be Quiet fans, it is up front. Mounted on the rear for additional breathing room. Because you don't have a real case unless um, the front is totally closed off and the fans can't breathe. socket for a second. It budged. Make sure that actually do screws. So I go 
hunting for the the fan screws I removed last night. Well, I was half asleep and just got the brilliant idea to start moving fans around. How did it get all the way over here? Oh my gosh. Please. Let's mount this here. It's okay ish. Oh, don't over tighten. Don't over tighten there. Okay. Great. The uh, little be quiet um, rubbery things easily squeeze out if you tighten the screw too much. Um, so I have learned. I know I put them all to, well, I guess I didn't put them all together because I keep finding them in random places all over the floor. That's all right. I was, oh, this is not visible. There we go. tightened. So I assume the other one is also in a completely random place somewhere on my floor. Given that's where the other ones were. Fortunately the floor was the only place with enough room for this large of a case. I couldn't have done it on the desk. Almost so organized too. I had the parts tray. I just didn't use it in time. At least when I'm live streaming and troubleshooting, it's like feel like you're making progress when you're hunting for something though. It's like you might never find it. It might just be a huge waste of time. I know it's here though. I mean, those fans were mounted with something. So I did, so I took four of the screws and moved them to the top of the case. So that's where those went. Uh, so yeah, I guess that does mean I only have one more left. Just kind of crazy. I'm probably gonna need to figure something out. These Corsair screws will mount the case did not come with any extra fan screws but these will work in the front like barely not comfortably but they'll barely fit um i have one more set of fan screws that's not quite as large as those uh, so that should help but i think that's really all i own as far as fan screws are concerned So, yeah, and I, it, we also have these grommets right here, and which I can't figure out exactly what they're for. They look like replacements for the motherboard mounting tray, um, or the uh, motherboard attachment, but I really don't know what their actual use is. They're quite small. You couldn't put a fan screw through them. Some other kind of case screw would probably fit. But fan screws definitely wouldn't. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna have to start using Corsair screws. Um, we'll just mount, we'll offset that a little bit, these grommets, and just make it work. And I might uh, have to do that for all of them, but just for uniformity's sake. Because these have a quite a big uh, spacer on the back. Cool. One. It looks like they won't fit, but I, I have mounted these and they do. Another one. 
this is uh, definitely redundant with all the rubber that the Be Quiet fans are made out of, but without them, I'll have nothing for the other side of the screw that's attaching the fan. Move that space these fans too far away. That might actually put the fan so far away that it starts pulling from inside the case and not outside the case. So these should probably face the other direction just for uh, airflow safety. Very important topic. Let's do that. Oh no, the stream is down. Why is the stream down? Come back. You can do it. Okay, the stream went down, but it's back. No idea why. Um, why that happened. All right, there we go. Yay, it's alive. Okay, so fans, more fan stuff. Let's replay, let's flip this over. This is a uh, Brahmas were not designed for this case. I'm just lucky that they fit in it. I guess we'll then need, so you go to 140, 140. Um, okay, 140 actually comes to there, and then 140, pretty much right to the top. And that's, that's convenient. Now this on this side. I do think with the uh, not much, uh, there's going to be enough airflow from that static pressure fan up top for the, the Vega. I mainly just want to keep sort of force feeding it cool air so it doesn't need to draw from inside the case. All right, um, two more. I can always just pull more out of the old case if I need to. Uh, let's see if I have more laying around. If I do not, then um, I'll just go to the old case. Oh yes, it's another bag of non-ridiculous fan screws. I love it. Oh, and another bag of fan screws. This is all uh, old stuff. I have found parts that will make the life, the life easier. Great. This is exciting. Oh my gosh, this is like Christmas. Here we go. This is a full bag of only fan screws that I have had in storage and kept for who knows what reason, but now uh, I guess I know what the reason was, is to attach many fans to this new build. All right, so uh, there's, I guess I'll just start pulling the extra rubber garments out of the old case, because yeah, I don't need those in there anymore. Right. I've got four already. I should have another four. Here's one. That's a middle and top fin view. What's this? One more. I was just holding. There it is. Great. Yeah, the 
should keep the fans quiet. And I may actually replace the, um, I may replace the be quiet uh, grommets on the bottom here with some of these too. Again, just so it's uniform. Because there is going to be a difference in fan height and that will affect the temperatures exactly 0% but it's going to drive my OCD crazy if uh, one fan is sticking out more or less than the others. Let's grab four more grommets out of our uh, Corsair case, which is being sacrificed for this build. Here's one, here's one. Oh, that's not even in the view of the camera. There's one. Uh, that's all, that's everything out of the side panel. There's a bunch in the top though, which are also never used. It was never used. I also have some extra um, dust filtering, which could be potentially useful. These grommets uh, off the top of the case are actually much thinner. Um, and this is not visible. I'll be back shortly in camera view, but the uh, grommets on the top of the case are much thinner than the other ones I was just dealing with. So that's uh, kind of, could be kind of useful in a certain area. I'm not sure. Okay, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Oh, I need 12. Okay, there's, and I think I only have two more. That's a strange number of parts to be out of because fans usually come in fours. These are the thinner ones. I'm, I'll probably uh, mount these at the top and rear. Perfect. That would work really well. So all I need now are two more of those really thick ones for the front fans. I'll mount these. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then two and the two extra in the bottom. Imagine why this case, the old Corsair case, would have had an, a non fan multiple. Oh my gosh, that was a lot of dust. That was really gross. I'll point it in this direction. This is the uh, dust filter from the NAS. It's been sitting in uh, where the cats live. I usually dust it off like once every month to be realistic but uh, that really wasn't enough. It's gonna be really nice to have everything in my uh, cat-free room. Hopefully that will happen less to my hardware. Here's that extra fan screw I was talking about and didn't have. So two more rubber grommets. I'm considering stealing them from the front of that case. That's why I opened it up. Um, but if I can at least leave some part of that intact, it might be nice. I pulled out the bag of computer parts last night. But it doesn't look like I had anything in there. I've got a bag of SATA cables that ended up um, here, but these these will be very useful in a bit. Not right now. Right now I just need rubber grommets. I've taken everything out of the top. They're a different size. I've taken everything out of the rear. I've taken everything out of the door panels. 
That might be the only extra place to get them is in the front of that case. So uh, I think I may, I was gonna wrap up the stream, but if this is like the most boring thing in the world, uh, which it, it's one of the most boring things in the world, I'll just leave the stream going. Uh, but that being said, I am just going to be hunting for screws until this gets all mounted and then the fun stuff will begin like overclocking and getting the Hackintosh installed and all of that. Uh, and hopefully it'll be done on not a potato camera. So I guess I'll make this the unofficial end of the video, but I'll just start hunting for parts. I'll mount the fans so that it looks like I'm making progress and I feel kind of better about the amount of time spent. That's what I'll do. I'll use some of these new fan screws. Never, never touch fan screws. That do not fit through the grommets. Things only keep getting more complicated. As soon as it seems like they're gonna be solved. It's okay. I think I got longer ones. These are longer. These are longer, but probably won't fit because they uh, have these standoffs. I'll do that. This is the extra length to accommodate the super large focus over here. Yeah, this is the extra length to accommodate the super long grommet, but it's too wide to fit in the Be Quiet case. It was not meant for it. This screw does fit just barely. Uh, and this may actually work for the front. All right, I'm disassembling the Corsair case. That's, that's it. It's gone. Thank you, Corsair case, for being a good server for some time and running a ZFS. This was the case to my first Hackintosh and is currently running like a 2010 Hewlett Packard from Best Buy motherboard with an AMD, some kind of weird triple core AMD processor from 2010. It's a eight, eight or 12 gigs of RAM. It's worked for a long time. Decent airflow and all of that good stuff. I guess I don't, yeah, we'll need to remove the hard drive cages to get access to the front fans. So I'll take those out. And the, the Be Quiet case is a massive, massive upgrade compared to this thing. This was an expensive case back in the day too. It was designed to be silent. All of that. Unnecessary four mounting screws for the uh, for the bottom drive tray because it's going to go running away with just the three that are on top. Cool. That is uh, that is quite dusty. appear to be the uh, more slightly nicer thin grommets. So that will be uh, nice for this, this new build. Keep removing things and replacing them and putting something in and then realizing it does not work the way I wanted it to or imagined it. My goal was to, by the end of the night, have windows running. But I don't, I don't know if that's actually that, I was going to say that's probably not going to happen, but I don't know. It could still be possible. It's these airflow decisions that are the, uh, the time consuming part. Remove fans. 
on YouTube. It's quite a uh, quite bizarre. So uh, let's take these out. And uh, that's kind of stuck in there below the. I wonder if the front panel of the case needs removed to gain access to this. It almost seems like it does. I don't think I've ever removed the front panel to this case before. I don't even know where you begin unlatching it. I really would like those silencers. Okay, let's take all these out. Silencer, 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 silencer. Supercharging the, the be quiet case. That's that's very gross. I obviously have never disassembled this. It's been neglected since I switched to a MacBook. For sure. How do you remove the front panel of this thing? There's no latch on the back. There's what appears to be relatively permanent metal clips, though, holding it on. I I don't know if they're designed to ever be removed. Oh, I might have got one. Oh, I got one. Okay. They're just very uh, non-user friendly looking metal clips, but they are movable. Stuck on something. Even though it is almost there. Is this part of the feet? Oh, okay, so it's attached to the feet and the feet are screwed in. Let's remove that. Or remove it from the feet, whichever way it should be looked at. Actually, they have this, I have this power supply mounted facing upwards too. But I don't think I even gave a second thought to airflow at the time. I didn't really know nearly as much. I just kind of threw parts in. I was like, yeah, it's close enough. There's fans in the front and there's fans in the back and they came with the case, so they must work, right? I mean, they work, but not well. Generally not well. Great. Success. Two more fan silencers have been acquired. I have plenty to go in the case and not uh, not need these silencers that have like an absurd amount of space on them. All right, back to the new case. Now I can just start mounting these things up instead of these. So we're taking these out. Oh, this would be so much better. And uh, these are spaced pretty much equidistant and judging by the dust pattern, Trying to see which side is supposed to face, uh, was facing outwards. I didn't pay attention to that. I don't think it really matters. So I might as well install them the way they came. The thicker side appears to consistently have more dust on it. So I'm going to assume that the thicker side is the side that was facing outwards towards the screw. Yeah, that, that was probably in there like that, which is bizarre. I would imagine that you'd want more silencing 
between the fan. But uh, since these fans are already relatively silenced, we'll just we'll do it that way. Try and like clean off some of this. gunk that has built up as I install that. <laughs> Almost grabbed the rubbing alcohol, but then I realized it might dry out and crack the rubber. This is what I'm looking for. All right. Yay, it's not a live stream of uh, hunting for parts anymore. Parts have been located. Okay, I'm just compress air these off. It's good enough as long as there's like not loose uh, dust and cat hair attached to them from the old NAS. It was a very uh, ineffective NAS because gigabit Ethernet is just way too slow for like media. It's only like a hundred megs a second. I mean USB 2 is almost as fast. No, it's not. 400 megabits. USB 3 is faster than that by a lot. It's five, five gigabits a second. So without, the thought was if I kept a laptop or some kind of Apple made thing, uh, 10 gig ethernet would be necessary because I couldn't install drives inside an Apple, inside a MacBook or an iMac. Um, there's no Mac Pro as such. It's just a extremely old trash can. And so with that being the case, I figured okay, I'd have to invest in 10 gig gear in order to make that usable. And that just didn't make any sense because the Apple stuff is already way slower. It just makes more sense to install all the drives internally. One more fan worth of silencers to install. And then uh, with any luck, the fans will finally be in. In a very dramatic and uh, time consuming fan installation, comparatively to the. That one's broken. There's my fingers out of the way while holding that. It has a uh, split right down the middle, so that's gone. Okay, silencers are in. Now let's install all of these. Uh, Silent Wings 3 fans in the front as a front intake. Cables running down and towards the back of the motherboard. And I bet uh, the, these screws may or may not fit depending on the thickness of the grommet. They definitely fit in the other one. I assume they will, because I got thicker screws than this through before. Yeah, those are the same thread. So I'll just take a little bit of coaxing. Yeah, they screw in. Potentially uh, not destroying the grommet, but making it uh, unlikely that it'll ever be used in another case. That's a better way of putting it.
But it probably won't be, because I'll probably plan ahead next time as to airflow and order fans and fan screws and grommets. This was very much like, ah, oh, it's Cyber Monday, everything's cheap. My computer's too slow. Get something new fast. And now I'm figuring it out after the parts arrived. I'm very, I'm, well, without using it, I'm very happy with the core build. I think, uh, I think it was a solid part selection. Ah, there we go. Oh no! It split. It was unhappy. How did that? Oh, it didn't split. It just pulled itself through, but it's still intact. What did I do wrong? Not that there. I guess what needs to happen is the screw needs to go through the grommet at the same time as it tightens into the fan. Otherwise, it will start pulling the grommet outwards in the process. I need, it just can't, it can't rotate freely. It's got to rotate uh, in a direction. Otherwise the counter torque will, will just remove itself. There we go, that is lined up. Oh, perfect. Much better. I've learned how to install fans. Big, great success. Slide these down. So happy I found this pack of brand new fan screws. This makes life uh, much better. Is that well silenced and isolated? It would also be pretty cool to have the triple fan set up in the front. There was a uh, five and a quarter inch bay uh, up here, but who uses CD-ROMs anymore? Um, and I guess you could use it for a fan controller or something. And they really put a lot of afterthought into it. They put this uh, replacement for the five and a quarter inch bay in here that lets you add a third uh, 140 millimeter fan. So that was really nice. Um, I saw it and I was like, oh, I wish I could add a third fan. And then I dug through the box and I was like, you can add a third fan. It's a really good design. And now there's a nice routing for all the fan cables through the back. Now that I have this properly positioned, inverting it was a good choice. Getting a little faster at this. to not have the fans touching if I can help it. They're going to need to be close to make space, but uh, the vibrations against each other, if they touch, could make buzzings.
We're so close. It's starting to look pretty uh, intense. It's the triple fan that always just looks the coolest, though. Totally worth it. Um, these are these are going to be nice fans for the job. The mix of uh, airflow as well as static pressure should deal pretty well with things. Um, one more. Yeah, it's actually progressing. This is great. The last uh, fan routing. Probably mount this at the top first. So I know how much space I have to uh, give the center fan so they're not against each other. All right. So this is definitely going to be a super positive pressure um, airflow situation. Uh, which is fine, but it's it could potentially be warmer. Um, so I think what I'm going to do to deal with that problem, because there's nowhere I can add an extra exhaust. I thought about the top, but then it's going to be starving the, the blower in the Vega 64 for air. And if there's any one piece I'm the most worried about, it's definitely the Vega 64, because that thing got really hot just during the BIOS test last night. Um, I could, it felt like a space heater on my hand. So I, that's when I thought, okay, I've got to really think about cooling and fan placement uh, because of Vega being a, an oven. So with that being the case, yeah, the, I'm only going to have two exhausts now. The, the PS, well, if you count the blower, I guess I'll have three exhausts. It'll be the Vega as a blower in the rear PCI Express slot, the PSU, and it's a 140 mil fan, I guess, and then the, uh, the rear Corsair airflow fan. So that's a decent amount of exhaust, um, but I'm going to have the three silent wings in the front. Granted, they're going to be suffocating a bit less now that I've flipped them to the, uh, the other side but because of the, uh, the closed off front. And I don't want to open it because then I'm going to hear the blower of the Vega card and that's just really loud. It's really obnoxious. I'll, maybe I'll find a different cooler for the Vega 64 at some point. Um, uh, that is perfect and very solid. So yeah, that's that's the problem with Vega. And so I'm gonna have these three Silent Wings three as a front intake, and now I'm gonna have a top intake as well, uh, putting static pressure on on the Vega 64. I already mounted that last night, and it's fine. Um, but I am considering swapping it out with these better grommets if I have enough. If not, it's no big deal, and I'll just leave it. But I think I do have enough. There's one, two. I should have uh, two more. What's with always uh, not having sets of two at a time? Well, I've got two of them. There's two very large ones I'd rather not use. I also don't even think they'd fit if I wanted to use them. These are much nicer uh, silencers though than the ones that I'm currently using for that top fan. See, I took four, one, two, three, four, five, six, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so eight came out of the top. That's these two fans. Five, six, seven, eight came out of the front. And so I'm using 12. I should have four left if math works. But I don't. I have two left. 
So I must have lost some seven inches somewhere along the way. It's too many small parts. And I guess I can always just double up the rubber grommets that are uh, that came with the Be Quiet case because those are fine. Uh, it's just that it's only one sided right now, so I will need to take that off either way and maybe add a add a second side to it. Yeah, I'll just start mounting these. This should work. Remove that fan screw, this fan screw. The uh, the magical fan adventure is almost over, thankfully. Just got this top fan to uh, redo with a with slightly nicer grommets and um, then the rear fan and uh, I think that's it. I'm even iffy about whether I'm even going to be able to redo the top one. Uh, the rear one is going to not work. It's going to require these thick ones which I don't, well I know those screws don't fit. The top one will work if I just double up the Be Quiet uh, little rubbery grommets. I end up holding things and waving them around without the camera showing it, so I need to be better about that. Well, let's see. Um, which way should we do this then? I guess... Well, the screw will still be transferring vibration to the case through the side of it um, without those uh, thicker grommets attached. So that would be the ideal situation if everything could come true. Now mounting these in reverse, will these fit? Oh, it, it will kind of. It's a little sketchy it might damage the case. Yeah, that's uh, it's just ever so slightly too large. What if I use these with a long fan screw? That will work. That is, that's a good solution to the problem. Cool, so I, I, can, I can do that with the remaining fan screws. We'll uh, mount these at the top, there's one. There's two, three, and four. The stickers. Uh, yes, this is static pressure fan and put the static pressure fan right above. It's gonna be blowing directly onto the Vega so it never runs out of cool air. Because um, without this, I'd have to somehow get air from the front to the Vega, uh, which is possible, but it's gotta travel quite a distance. It's gonna be fighting with the Noctua because that's gonna be pulling quite a bit. It's got a really large intake. And then I'd have to start covering the airflow path between the CPU and, oh, more visible, between the CPU and the front with drives in the kitchen. This way I can completely block off the, di the space between the front and the, um, between the front and the rear at the top. So the Vega will not have, it probably, be, it'll basically have no air from the front, but that's going to be okay because we'll be doing this cold intake from, from the top. And that should hopefully keep Vega cool. It's a, it's a challenge with that card. 
How long is this? Oh, I see which. That is this set over here. Great. Two. It's right here. Three. Slide this as far forwards as I can. I believe that was right about where the Vega was sitting, sort of at the limit of the um, of the 140 mil rails up here at the top. Mounting a water cooler in this case would be a bit of a pain. It would be, oh no! Gosh, yes. It would be nice to have one of those um, radiator drawers that slides out. I think Be Quiet does that on some of the lower end cases, maybe. Ironically, because this is the flagship case. Oh, that was interesting. The, the uh, screw just disappeared right inside of the grommet. Just popped, wrapped around it. Maybe that's how it's supposed to work. Oh, no, that's not how it's supposed to work because it comes with other screws. But it, it, it's cool that way. So the screw is kind of, I don't want to totally break the camera, but the screw has uh, disappeared inside the grommet. It's like the grommet wrapped around it, which I guess means the screw is now kind of floating in rubber. And that's going to be really good for silence, especially on these... Uh, I mean, assuming it works the way I just imagined it working, because it I could be totally wrong, and it might just be totally broken, because that that one well that's not broken that just popped through. But uh, yeah, well maybe it is broken. <laughs> it wasn't attached. Yeah, that one's broken. The other ones are fine. This one's definitely all chopped up now. But it's okay. There's no other use for these, and they're really impractical. I don't really want to be using them, but they're the last ones I have. Here we go. Again, it's that issue of needing to go directly into the fan as it pushes through. I had forgotten. Otherwise, the reverse torsion ruins the grommet. And there we go. It should just you know, wrap around like that, even though it's not supposed to. Yeah, that is very, uh, very rubberized. Nice. It's a blower for the blower. I heard you like cool Vega 64s. No, you don't use a blower if you want a cool graphics card. You get a blower if you're cheap and buy the, um, what's it called? The manufacturer version. The whatever, Founders one. Founders edition, Frontier edition. Uh, how compatible, I just saw your question. I hope I'm not too late. How compatible is the Z390 Designer as a Hackintosh motherboard? Good question. Um, that's, what, uh, that's what I'm going to be finding out. I have no idea. Uh, I assume it's going to work because Gigabyte works well. And uh, people have done Titan Ridge, um, Titan Ridge Thunderbolt controller Hackintoshes on X299. And uh, with the, I believe some people have used the X299 Designer. Nobody I can find on the internet has used the Z390 Designer. So this is, uh, this is the challenge uh, to get that working once the case is assembled. So future live streams, once the parts are in, that we'll, we'll be figuring that out. I think it's going to work though. And I'll definitely be talking about any stuff that I, that I come across. So, oh, uh, the monitor's all the way over there. Oh, he found someone. Thank you. That's awesome. That's so cool. Wait, are you sure it's Z3, um, oh yeah, Z390. I, I think people have done Z370 Designer before. Here's my bed. Um, Z370 uh, Designer. That is so cool. Wow, YouTube Live is the place to be. 
Thank you. I th but also, like, oh, I thought it was the world first. World first designare 9900K Z390 person on a Hackintosh. Um, so this, okay, I'll route this to the fan controller in the rear. I'll keep an eye on my, on my screen. This is looking really nice. I could add another fan. I have another Corsair static pressure. <laughs> what, what would I do with that? Would that have any practical use at all? Let's take a, a step, not a step back, a tripod back, a triple legged uh, camera holder. Hop back, perhaps. Um, okay. So this was the plan. It has come through as an inverted power supply uh, exhaust, uh, Corsair AF140 exhaust, three Silent Wings three intake, um, hard drives, hard drives, airflow, blah, blah, blah. open airflow channel to the CPU cooler, which will then be exhausted through the fins, which will be coming up to right about there, the PSU. The exhaust fan, uh, the Vega 64 will be up here with the blower, which is going to be choked by the hard drives. So we have a static pressure fan pulling from the, oh, that was a sound. We have a static pressure fan pulling from the top um, and uh, maintaining, oh, that's not in the, that's not in the frame. Pulling from the top and maintaining static pressure on the Vega 64 blower. So that I think is ideal. I could mount a second static pressure fan up here, but it would literally be doing nothing. It would just be blowing on the plastic case of the Vega. If I put it here, it would uh, be just blowing on a hard drive and just be making noise. Bottom intake. Can't put one there, that's useless. And a bottom intake fan would just create turbulence and we've got bottom exhaust. So I think that's it. I think we're done with uh, fan changes. So basically this was a, to sum it up, we took the rear silent wings, first flipped the motherboard, inverted it to inverted ATX, took the rear silent wings, put it in the front, airflow in the back, static pressure on top. Uh, that's it. Cool. I'm so happy that's done. No more, uh, well, there's still going to be a lot more hunting for screws, but that's done, <laughs> at least. It's a, a progress. I might even be able to wire these up now. How exciting. So we've got a, here's the fan controller that comes with the, uh, comes with the case. I don't know what we can or can't do with it. I do know these all share the same control, though. There's four, um, or rather three uh, PWM slots. The white is the PWM fans. The three are just standard fan headers. So we'll do, uh, I guess we'll do the PWM fans for the silent wings up front. What are these numbered? Fan six, seven, and eight. So we'll do from bottom to top. Fan six. You go right here. Fan seven here. And uh, fan eight here. I will start to think about how uh, these cables will be managed. This won't make it all the way down. I could probably route it through the top though. That'll work. So we'll take the top fan, route it through the uh, top of the case. I want this builds to be very clean. Oh, you know what? It doesn't. It shouldn't even come out of the uh, the side channel yet. I can probably. Uh, every time I try to do something new, it's immediately out of the frame. The higher a camera main. 
woman, person, family person. This goes through here, there. Over the top, down this side, and into the fan controller, avoiding all the hard drives. This fan is going to be yeah, channeled through here over to the, um, I guess, three pin or the static pressure fan. Please fit. There we go. That seems okay. That is, that is correct. Uh, these rear fans, that's, that one's in an awkward position. I think it will reach over the top if I channel it up the side. I'm going to flip that around and then I'm going to kind of work the cable up this side channel. That. Oh, there's a link. Let's let's go look at the uh, the YouTube for a second. Nice build. Uh, a very similar setup. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I I uh, can't believe you found this either. That is so cool. Uh, I hope um I hope people can hear me speaking. I'm sure well, I'm sure you can hear me. Yeah, awesome. I'm um uh, I'm so glad you're here. That is great. Maybe I can send like a thumbs up emoji or something. And it froze. Never mind. It doesn't like chat. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a, it's going to be a very nice build. I am I am excited for it. Uh, it should be good. So yeah, thank you so much. I will I'll keep putting videos out as I go. Hopefully they won't be filmed on a potato camera next time. Um, yeah, that is it, it, it will improve over time as I figure out how this uh, how this all live streaming thing works so yeah let's go back uh, back here finish cleaning up the fan wiring and we run this up the side getting it slowly and the side over here Nice. And over through. Oh, the camera fell. It is it is facing downwards. There we go. It is rescued. And up through the side channel here, over the top. Please reach the fan controller, please. You can do it. I just put all this effort in. Oh, this should be fine. Yeah, this will be fine. And the middle fan. Very cool. And now the bottom fan can be routed uh, through the bottom of the case. I will pull it through there and shale it. I want to keep it out of the way of the hard drives. That is one thing. So I'll bring this here and up through the back of this motherboard side panel deal and to the fan controller great so now uh, the fan controller is controlled by the um, uh, there's a module at the front of the case that deals with that so I'd like to probably maintain control over intake and then let the motherboard do like software control over the like, I won't have software control because I'll be running a Mac um, I guess there's the Mac fan control but I don't know if that works on a Hackintosh I haven't uh, I haven't tried it. thank you so much for the subscription I'm very new to the YouTube thing uh, so that means a lot you're literally like one of my first subscribers ever uh, I will I will try, do my best to keep it up I appreciate it it's a good a good day thumbs up all this uh, 
All my nerdering is uh, helpful to someone. Channeling these cables up the side. This is going to be very clean. This looks ugly. So this one needs to be hidden somehow. Oh, <laughs> that involves going outside of the case, so that's not happening. That's going to be the motherboard. Uh, again, uh, visual stuff. Oh, this is uh, almost nearly hidden. All right. This is the, the next cable to tackle. This might actually be the best way to do it. Just run it down here and then like straight up to the motherboard. I think that's probably the only and, uh, and best way to do it. And the motherboard's pin is like somewhere there. So yeah, so the front, I, I'll be controlling intake over the entire front uh, fan rig with the slider. Should I hook the rear fan up to the fan controller too? I'm wondering what that would do. If I, if I can, I might be able to avoid like really unbalanced pressure by, yeah, I'll be able to avoid unbalanced pressure by providing different power to the fans. Um, if they're all spinning at the same speed and we've got three, four 140s versus like one 140 in a Vega blower, that's not really, not very balanced airflow. So good. It's, it's a case. I can't believe it. Um, I think I'll, I could even mount the SSD in or on this weird little cage thing. I believe it mounts on top of it, maybe, or inside. I can't quite figure it out. It mounts here somewhere, probably inside. Uh, and I do have an SSD I'm going to use. Let's do that next. That's where my, uh, my Windows drive will go. That's the plan, anyway. And uh, the Windows drive is in here. It's in this Toshiba laptop. And it's currently got Linux on it, but that is not a problem. We will do a, an ATA secure erase and reset all the NAND to bring it back to 100% life. Uh, tiny screwdriver. This one we mounted correctly before. Something I just sort of playing around with and rebuilt. Um, worked pretty well with an SSD in it, but uh, I needed a separate drive for Windows and didn't want to sacrifice anything fancy because it's really just going to be for the utility of Windows stuff getting done. All right, so here's the SSD, and here's the SSD caddy. And uh, is it meant to fit inside? I can't figure it out. It's so close that like you could almost say it is, but I've seen a build where it was done on top, which makes me think it maybe is supposed to be mounted on top instead. Yeah, I think it goes on top. It's kind of weird, but I think that's how it's supposed to work. So uh, yeah, I'll mount this uh, facing downwards. We can run the cables down and through to the motherboard. Yes, that makes more sense. Had to think about it. Let's look back at the uh, at this computer. Now we can open the bag of uh, bag of things that this came with. Now it said it came with hard drive screws. They did not specify if it came with 2.5 inch screws. I think these are the 2.5 inch screws. So we'll try that. 
I'll empty them into the iFixit uh, box so that I don't lose them like absolutely everything else that's happened. to we'll try and maintain some level of organization for the rest of this build. This is just a 256 gig, um, whatever default, like MX100 crucial drive. It's nothing fancy, but it's not uh, an SSD at least. Maybe there's room on there for like one game. Aren't games like 100 gigs now or something? I, have, I haven't even played games in forever. Oh, these are uh, the threadings on these are a little large. I think this is a little too big to be a 2.5 inch screw. So uh, maybe these are the motherboard screws. Yeah, the threading is too large on those. Uh, these ones are definitely the 3.5 inch. That's all it really came with. Let's double check the manual. Save some time. What are these? Huh. All kinds of strange attachments. I assume this is some, uh, I don't know. I'm not going to assume what that is. I really have no idea. So, reading right side up. Motherboard tray, SSD bracket, blah, blah, blah. Front air filter. Um, there's the fan controller. Oh, the 900 does not have, man, okay, it does not get any motherboard control. It's only going to be manually regula regulated. It's kind of unfortunate, but that's all right, I guess. Better than needing like 20 fan attachments for the motherboard. This is German, but I don't see anything with the numbers 2.5. I must have passed it in the English. M3 screws for, oh, okay, so there are eight M3 screws for SSD mounting. Interestingly, there are, uh, there are no threads on any of the screws in the diagrams. They're just sort of blocks. But um, apparently there's eight of these things somewhere, and they're for SSD mounting. Oh, there they are. I have found them. Here's a, here are the SSDs, SSD screws. And facing downwards. Yeah. I guess I'll also uh, be reseeding the Vega 64 soon. I'll probably do that next after I swap cameras. Provided that it uh, is decent quality with the phone, it may not be. SSD on a mount. And that should go right here. Very nice. That's Windows. It will be Windows. It's Linux right now. Might even be able to use that to just uh, as a utility. To sort of reset some drives in the meantime. I'm just double checking this uh, list of screws that it came with. I 
Yeah. Okay. Cool. It's semi attached. Wow. Things are things are coming together a little bit. What next? Are, are we ready to uh, actually install the motherboard already? I think so. I think I can install the motherboard. It's really exciting. Let's do that. Um, I'll flip it over this way. Yeah, okay. I'm going to think this through in a way where it can be flat but still visible and um, also accessible. Many screws for many things. snapping I don't like it but it's uh, it's fine now I think it's just lining up okay that should do it motherboard installation time that is a really nice open airflowy case right now uh, I've got to make sure I am not electrically conductive so I'm going to plug in the PSU if it'll reach, just to ground, keep the case grounded. The power is off. Not like it matters because the PSU isn't connected to anything anyway. Um, yeah. So now the whole frame is grounded. So uh, I will ground myself and move this in. Oh, it's so large. It's a fan cable. Don't want to pinch the fan cable. Try and align this. That middle ATX holder spot thing. Wonderful. We're back to where we were at the start of the video, except with a correct or more useful power supply orientation and more fans. There we go. And this is uh, what I had in mind. The power supply is now pulling directly out of the, um, the Noctua cooler and the first fan gets air first before any uh, exhaust has a chance to take it. Meanwhile, the Vega is going to be up here. I won't install the Vega right now uh, because I do want to reseat that heat sink. I don't think, I think it would be wrong to assume that the thermal paste they use is probably garbage. So I'd like to fix that first with some uh, thermal grizzly. Kind of, I'm just playing with the CPU fan headers right now. I'm kind of concerned that they'll uh, fall into the power supply fan. I just want to make sure they're out of the way, that they don't like melt on the RAM modules or something. I know the RAM doesn't get that hot, but having them touching, like resting on a heat generating device long term, doesn't sound like a good plan. It also just looks kind of ugly right now. No, you can't see it, but this thing just got really heavy. So I'm not moving it right now. I guess I'll sort that out later. Or maybe I should sort it out before I actually connect the thing. I don't think RAM's going to get hot enough to damage. Uh, oh, there's a comment. Uh, does it work, dude? It uh, does not yet, because we just finished installing the fans. Well, it works. Actually, I did boot it last night. It doesn't work as a Hackintosh yet, though. Um, Windows is first, and we're very close to Windows now because the board is in, and uh, 
Then we just need to screw that in, put in the graphics card, connect up the power supply. It's, it's cl much closer. The, the planning phase was not done yet. It has been thoroughly planned. Let's pull this through. Great. All right, that's fine. Let's uh, just mount the motherboard. Yeah, let me mount the motherboard now. Motherboard screws. I just found those accidentally, thinking they were um, they were SSD screws, I believe. Manual. M3 Straubin. Mainboard of Befetzigun. Straubin 6, number 32. There are 12 of them. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's these guys. Let's mount the motherboard. screws. They don't have a very large top and usually motherboard screws have like a larger flatter top to make ground contact. Are there 12 of any other type of screw though? I don't think so. It doesn't look like it. So that's kind of bizarre that there's not a like a flat even uh, ground contact because there's always these uh, these little drops of solder in there that are sort of connected to global ground if you will yeah. but yeah not seeing a large amount of screws that would fit that description so i'll just keep moving ahead with these i'm sure these are fine they're still making some contact with that they just don't look like the motherboard screws i am used to uh, installing Mojave or High Sierra, uh, Mojave, definitely. That's why I got Vega because they, they dropped NVIDIA support in Mojave, unfortunately. Otherwise I would have got an NVIDIA card. So Mojave is the goal. I just don't want to be out of date with stuff because at some point software is going to require that. If it doesn't already. Cool. Oh, that's going to be a pain to reach that screw behind the screw behind the Noctua. That thing is so massive. You almost like you have to mount the main board before you, uh, before you do that. I've got a extender for a screwdriver. Hopefully this will make it possible. Let's try this. Attach the bit here. It's like a snaky screwdriver bit. I really just didn't want to mount the cooler inside the case, though. So I can reach it. I just, if I can reach it to align it. Even if I tried to reposition the camera, I don't know how visible this might be. It's very dark and all the way in there. Mm. Oh, I guess this. Hopefully it doesn't need too much force because uh, that's one thing that this snake attachment cannot provide. Yeah, it 
use too much force for this. I'll have to try and fit the actual screwdriver in there. I hope that I can reach. I think it'll reach. This is awkward. I'm trying not to slip my finger on the cooler. Those blades are quite sharp. All right, there's that. We are almost halfway done with motherboard screw installation. This is the slowest PC build I've ever done, but it's also the first one where I've really like wanted to get it right from the start. Oh, that doesn't have a spot. That's just the uh, the ATX bump there that has its own spots. One more, I believe. Oh, that's going to be the hardest one. Oh, dear. <laughs> I can reach under there, though. So if I can reach it, it's probably possible. I can put my hand underneath the power supply and sort of line it up and drop the feed the screwdriver to my my other hand oh man oh no for some reason these screws will not uh, magnetize even though this is a magnetic screwdriver it could have just lost its charge Here, let's do this. A remagnetizer. Let's not get this near the DRAM. Magnetize. Oh, it's not in there. I think that's how you, that's how you do it. Okay, that, that should not be near the computer. This shouldn't be bad though. This is not a very strong magnetic charge. And it doesn't work. So the be quiet has made their screws out of a non-magnetic uh, material. Either that or the the black no the black paint wouldn't stop them from being magnetic. Let's try this again. This is going to be the most challenging screw of the entire build. It is almost like they designed this cool. Oh, it's it's magnetizing now. It worked. That remagnetizer uh, has has been magical. Great. Just drop it in and uh, use my other hand, which is under the PSU, to try and keep things lined up. I think it's going. I think. Oh, yep. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. That's it. The motherboard is officially mounted. Very cool. Um, now, I guess it's time to... Before I put the Vega in, I should probably run the case cabling which means starting to reassemble the case. So I think I will take a break because I've been talking at the camera for quite a while and looking for parts. It should start to get more fun now. Oh my gosh, my face isn't even in the frame. There I am. All right, it should start to get more fun now uh, because this is finally here. We're not hunting for fans or screws or just reorientating things. So, um, I might even just rebuild the case offline because that's easy. It's just snap panels back in. And um, then we'll come back to, uh, to continue. Sorry, I keep looking at myself on the screen. The camera's there.
keep my eyes on the camera. Okay, everyone. Cool. Thank you so much for watching. And hopefully this is useful. And I will see you uh, in the next live stream.